All right. So here we are with Scott Jorgensen and Uriah Faber, both fighting at the Ultimate Fighter finale on August 13th. And uh, you guys are obviously very familiar with each other. So what do you, what's the feeling going into the fight, fighting somebody that you've known for some time with both the WEC and being buds? You know what? This is, I can tell we're six weeks out. This is going to be a question we get over and over and over again. <laughs> So hopefully it doesn't affect our friendship. <laughs> the fight won't, but all these questions may. But no, uh, it, it is what it is, man. We're we're professionals, and uh, you know, we have a, we have a history of being friends, and, and uh, but we're gonna have a history of beating each other up when it comes to April thirteenth, and and everything else will be to the wayside. Yeah. Yeah, you know it's it is what it is. You know we both knew this day would probably come. Um, you know, we're both 135, both some of the, the two of the best fighters in the world, and it's just our time. That's it. You know, we'll go out there, we'll handle our business, and you know, we'll figure out the rest after. But you know, it's it's not going to affect our friendship. We're just going to go out there, beat each other up, like you said, and and uh, you know, best man may the best man win, and we'll carry on forward with our careers from there. So. And for that matter, with being able to see each other's fights so much with both the WEC, even though you were both different weight classes at that time, uh, and you've had a lot of common opponents, Barrow, Cruz, Wineland, uh, how does that, is that an advantage to you or a disadvantage to you to have seen so much of each other's fights and have so many common opponents? You know, I, I don't think it does. You know, I think I've been, since I started fighting, I think I've been to almost every one of your eyes. I think you've probably been the same to mine, almost every one. We've seen each other, we've got common opponents, but the beauty of this sport is every day you step inside the octagon, it's, it's, it's a new fight. It doesn't matter what happened last week or you know, two years ago or what happened when he fought Barrow or when I fought Barrow. We're two completely different people. It's a completely new fight and it's a completely new day. So you know, I go in there with the, the mentality that I'm ready for anything. You know, whatever that fight may go, I'll, I'm going to be prepared and ready to fight. And I'm, you know, I know you're right. It's going to be the same way. So I don't think either one of us are looking back at our past, going, you know, he does this or he does that. You know, we're both expecting fireworks and going to deliver. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll find out whether there's an advantage or not when when it comes fight day. And uh, you know, I don't think so. I'm, you know, I don't. I don't think it's gonna have an effect. We've all also changed a bunch over over the years as fighters, and so it's just gonna be a new fight, just like every fight, man. It's gonna be a good one. You had a huge win, Uriah, UFC 157 over Ivan Menjivar. What was it like to get back in that W column and take that momentum going into this fight? Felt good. You know, I was one fight removed from from uh, my last victory against Brian Bowles, and. Uh, you know, to go in and, and get back in a winning track. It wasn't necessarily that I haven't won fights lately. It's just been a long time since I fought. I fought once last year. It was against Hanan Burrell. I filmed the reality show. I broke my rib during that fight, so I was out another four months. And uh, it just feels good to be active. You know, this is the, the best the best way to go in and, and fight is when you're in that mode. and it's, it's better to stay in the mode when you can go one fight after another. And, you know, this, this is perfect for me. Getting into the UFC rankings, you're right up there on top now. Both of you are actually in the top 10 for the bantamweight division. Do you feel that, that this fight holds a lot of, I guess, importance towards rising to that next level and getting maybe a shot with the interim title? I think so. I mean, whoever wins the fight is going to be a step closer, that's for sure. You know, rankings are rankings. It's all opinion until you're holding the belt. So. To me, the rankings don't matter. I think definitely, like, Uriah and I, the winner out of us definitely has to be uh, right up there. Uh, we are two of the best in the world, and, you know, we're going to go in there and show why. So. Yeah, you just had that uh, submission victory over John Albert, and that was also a big win for you. You had a couple of losses right before that. Did you at any point feel that the pressure was mounting for you to have to get a W in the UFC? There isn't pressure. I always want to win. I don't care if I've lost three fights in a row, one fight in a row, or I'm on a five-fight win streak, I want to win. Um, you know, I, I lost to Hannon Burrell in what I feel was a close decision. I feel like, uh, you know, my fight with Eddie, I was, I was winning up until uh, he, he knocked me out. So um, I learned a lot from the fight with Eddie Wineland. I learned, I went out there, I, I submitted John Albert in the first round, walked away with fight of the night, submission of the night, and, and a victory. So uh, it's been a good, it was a good end of the year for me after struggling my first two fights last year. and. Uh, you know, just keep it going. You know, I keep 
I kept looking up and looking forward to the next big thing, next big thing sitting next to me, and I'm going to go punch it. And you had mentioned before that you and Uriah had, you and Uriah had sparred together and that you also had um, tweeted how much Uriah was responsible for bringing you up to where you are in MMA and having that drive to you know, really go at it full strength. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and tell us, I guess, how Uriah basically influenced your drive to compete at a higher level in MMA? I, I, you know, I was wrestling, Uriah was coaching at UC Davis. He, you know, we always talked. I was a big fan of MMA, and you know, he was fighting, so I was asking him questions. And he, one day, you know, he's like, you, sh "You should fight. You should try it out. I think you'd like it. You know, you make a little bit of money and all this." And I finished my college wrestling, fought, loved it. Trained a little bit out there with uh, Uriah, his guys. Took some fights, fell in love with it more. Signed on with the WEC, and you know, that was it. You know, that's all I've done for the last, you know, six, seven years. So. Um, you know, it was, it was big, you know, he introduced me to our management, you know, we share the same manager, a lot of the same friends, you know, been, he, we were on forum together, and a huge part of that was because he was over there telling forum, you know, you gotta pick, pick Scotty up, Scotty's a good, good guy for us to have, and, you know, I appreciate everything he's helped me out with, and, uh, you know, but, um, you know, it's, it, it was a huge part for my, for, he was a huge part of helping me get my career going, for sure, so. Now, I understand he also kind of has delayed uh, vacation for you to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about that and uh, what the reason was behind you actually uh, going to take a trip to Hawaii? Oh, man. So I fought Albert when I was extra bonus money. And for the first time in, you know, I don't know, like four years, I was going to go on a vacation where it was non-fight related. I was going to take my girlfriend off to Hawaii, propose, and had all these nice plans and beach house set up and all this stuff and we're three days away I get a call from the manager from our manager saying hey you ready to fight you ready and I'm like yeah who when Uriah April 13th and I'm like what <laughs> I was like you kidding he's like no that's it and I'm like all right well you know I I've never been one to pick my fights she looked at me after I told her and goes you can't go to we can't go to Hawaii now we gotta you gotta get your ass ready for this fight like um okay, well, we can find a way to go, and it didn't happen, obviously, so she didn't know what was coming up in Hawaii, so we, I flew her down here to Vegas for a couple days early to spend time with her family, I flew in later, on Mon or I flew in Monday, got everything all set up, popped the question up top of the Cosmo, and now I can focus on this guy. She did say yes, right? Oh, she said yes. <laughs> and, but uh, <laughs> you wouldn't be hearing about it if she said no. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a hell of a lot more angry right now. But, uh, um, you know, now I get to focus on this guy. And I don't have to worry about the stress of popping a question. Or she can take care of all the wedding stuff. I'll fight him and take care of business, so. Nice. Now, um, back to uh, the fight itself. You guys got this call because the uh, flyweight championship was off. So now you're the main event. Is the short, shortened training camp period at all going to be an issue? Is it actually kind of, a, I guess, lesser of a training camp than you would normally have? Um, for me, I've been training. I always, I'm always training. You know, I'm always, you know, I may not be in a full training camp type mode, but you know, I'm always in shape. I'm always kind of ready to go because of situations like this. So you know, I. Can, Six weeks isn't that short for me. You know, I've I've done it before. I've done it. I've done it on shorter notice. You know, I've, I'm I'm a wrestler. I know how to get ready for for competition, and and so it doesn't matter to me. Uriah's coming off a fight, so he's already gonna be in shape, and hopefully he's taking like three weeks off before we. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but a couple pounds. Like, yeah. So uh, you know, for me it doesn't matter. It's just another fight. I'll be ready to fight. I'm always in shape, and I'll be ready to go. So. Nice. Yeah, I, I, you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, and uh, that's my motto. I've always been, been ready to rock. I don't think I've ever been out of shape my whole life, although I did have some serious cankles after a trip to uh, Ohio <laughs> and, and putting on 20-plus pounds after the, my fight, but uh, you know they're gone, cankles are gone, and uh, I'm ready to rock. Cool. Now, uh, with your training camp, uh, Alpha Male, I heard that you actually were responsible for going out and finding Dwayne Ludwig to bring him in as your new head coach. Uh, how did that process come about for you? Did you just happen to run into him, or did you specifically go out to scout him? Well, I've never been the head coach of our team, per se. I've always just been a team leader and the founder of the team, and I always help guys out with stuff. But uh, we have a whole set of coaches, 
but everyone has like their own things they're doing aside from coaching. And every time I leave town, it seems like there's grumblings of like things are disorganized and and you know lacking leadership sometimes and stuff like that because you know everyone's got their own their own schedules. So when I was on a trip back from China, I wrote down a whole list of people that I thought would be great coaches and a lot of I worked I had a chance to work with a lot of people through the uh, the Ultimate Fighter. I had you know had some guys come out and I've over time worked with a lot of coaches and. And I just felt like Dwayne would be the next level of coach. He's a he's like the next generation of coach. He's a great teacher. He's extremely strong in one area, which is the stand up area, which at Team Alpha Male, you know, primarily have a lot of grapplers that, that we come from. And um, he's also well rounded as a as a mixed martial artist. He's good at jiu jitsu, he knows wrestling, he knows how to mix it all together, and he's he's got a great mind for the sport. So uh, I got a hold of him right when I landed from China actually. I had this whole thing written out. I was brainstorming the whole way. And I just texted him. I said, Dwayne, is this still your number? And he said, yes. I said, can I give you a call? He said, yeah, call me now. And then I did a quick interview. I asked him if he had his own gym out there in Colorado, if he had a house out there. And he said, no, it's funny that you're calling. I was actually just offered a job in Vegas, and I don't really want to take my family out there. And it was shortly after that we brought him out. And he started before we even had him come out. He started acting as a head coach. He was breaking down fighters and, and just going the extra mile without being paid or told or anything else, and I really like that. And uh, he's a, got a great work ethic also, so it's, it matches well with our team. And now Team Alpha Male is 4-0 with him. We are. We're 4-0 right now with Dwayne. And, um, you know, we have, we have a lot of coaches that have helped with that process throughout this time. We have Dustin Akbari and uh, Fabio Prado and uh, Justin Buckles and... Master Tom, uh, I forget Giff's last name, but th these guys have been really helping out with Joseph Benavides because he comes out here quite a bit as well. So we've had a lot of contributors to, to our success, but having Dwayne as a solid part of the team has been has been huge, especially for confidence and structure. Now, what was all this at the UFC 157 press conference up following the fight? Uh, you were saying something about reporters had been asking you during that week about retiring, but yet I feel that you are just now coming into your prime. What were your thoughts on that whole retirement, I guess kind of nonsense, if you would? <laughs> yeah, it's just funny. I mean, I guess people have to ask about that kind of thing. Um, I've spent a lot of time in the last 10 years developing a skill set that puts me with the top fighters in the world. And, and we've got guys like Hanan Burrell is an example of that, that have started since they're a little kid, probably about the same amount of time that I put in to develop a skill set to where he's at and he's coming in. And then you've got uh, all these other people that are coming in and, and developing skill, but I'm one of the top fighters in the world. I have a, I'm getting better skill-wise. My body feels incredible. Uh, I'm at a weight that's the most comparable for my, for my body structure. And uh, there's no reason for me to even think about retirement. Now, if you take it back from the days, I mean, you were king of the cage, you had the ring of fire going on, and you guys have been in the sport for such a long time. How dramatically has it evolved with guys like Hanem Burrell coming into the sport that have trained from such a young age? You know, I don't think it has changed that much other than we have more skill involved. For me, the, the big thing with a champion the mindset is, is number one, and you're not going to get guys with a tougher mindset than some of the champions that have been throughout, you know, been here throughout history. Guys like Randy Couture, guys like Chuck Liddell, you know, guys even, you know, Tito Ortiz and Mark Coleman. These guys were one sport athletes at one point, but were extremely mentally strong, and you're getting that same mentality with a new skill set, so that's, that's a little bit different, but the mindset will still win over a diverse uh, technical game. You know, if you have a strong, mental, mentally strong guy and he's going against a guy who's not as mentally strong but has been training for a long time and knows some cool stuff, uh, I'm always going to go with the mentally strong guy at the end of a fight. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that, Scott? Um, I, I, I think, you know, a lot of what you're right. I'm a huge mental guy. Like, uh, you know, you believe in it, you, you trust in yourself, and you go out there and you perform. Um, you know, but I think kids starting younger definitely gives them a, you know, they, they've had the same ability like Uriah was saying, you know, we're just older. We've been training probably as long as them, but we're just a little bit older, which, 
you know, comes with its, uh, you know, its experience and we've got that, uh, you know, I think we're a little bit more savvy about how we go about things. We understand how much work it takes to be successful. Um, these kids are still coming into it, the younger kids. But, uh, you know, I, I think it hasn't changed the sport very much. The only thing is, you know, it has become a more technical sport. And, you know, it, it, all it does is it closes that gap between a champion and that number, you know, ten, top, that top, number 10 top-ranked guy. And on any given night, you know, it makes that, that, that margin razor thin, you know, and it makes you be sharp. You have to be on point to maintain, it, maintain your title and, and maintain a winning streak in this sport. So, you know, it's, I think that's the big thing is it, it makes you be still, it makes you honest in the fact that you're training hard, you're, tr you're, you're sharp and, and you're dedicated to the sport. So. Now, um, for the interim Bantamweight Championship next up, we have Hernan Burrell versus Eddie Wineland. And again, you guys are both familiar with them as opponents. And what are your thoughts on that fight? And who do you see taking it, if you want to give, I guess, a prediction? Um, you know, I, that fight, I think it'll be, it'll be exciting. Eddie will get in there. He'll mix it up. He's not afraid. He moves well. Um, uh, from my personal experience of fighting the two, I think Burrell's going to win. Um, even though Eddie finished me, you know, I didn't feel, he, he didn't get a lot through until he landed the final shot that knocked me out. Um, he dropped me once, but outside of that, he landed two big shots. You know, I, I think I was beating him up. I was winning the fight. Um, Barrow was a lot harder for me to hit. Uh, and he's, he's de he, deals, he manages his range really well, like I was saying, and he's, he's able to do damage when he needs to. And I think the thing that we realized against McDonald is the guy can, he can actually take the guy down. He has, he has a pretty solid wrestling base, obviously, and, and he's tough on the ground. You know, he's, I don't know if he's a brown belt or black belt, but yeah. he went out there and submitted McDonald after fighting very smart and wearing him down. So, um, I got Brown, but. Yeah, I'm gonna give Brown the edge. Eddie's been looking great lately. His uh, striking is his best asset. He is no slouch anywhere else, but um, Brown's, I think, gonna be too well rounded for him. And he's very durable also. He's young and he's strong for the weight. So I, I think that's gonna be the difference, you know, being a little bit more well rounded. And just to wrap it up, after this fight's over, you guys, I'm assuming, would go back to just being buds. I mean, would you take each other out for a beer or anything right after? <laughs> yeah, we'll probably have our after party in the same place. <laughs> yeah. I think that's actually in the works. And we'll be buddies during the fight, too. Just it's going to be ugly. It's not the kind of friendship anybody else wants to be in, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I appreciate your time, both of you, and wish you all the best. And uh, I guess it's going to be interesting to see what happens when two buds go into the ring on April 13th at the Ultimate Fighter finale. Thanks.